Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome you guys to our online broadcast and worship experience. We thank God for you showing up today. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here, but we do believe that there will be something that'll be shared that'll be a tremendous blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody, to all of our Spirit of Fire family. We love you guys. We appreciate you so much. We're praying for you constantly. And so we just want to let you know that you're, you're in our thoughts and our prayers and our hearts. And so even in this virtual setting that we want to send out love to you guys. Um, some of you, we connect more with than others, but we really want to connect with our people. And so we will be connecting with you very soon just to just see how you're doing. Uh, we want to let you know that we just love you and appreciate you so much. And so listen, I miss, I miss the touches of the people. I miss loving on people, hugging on people, seeing people. Um, I'm a people person I, and I just love being in the atmosphere where people are. Um, but one of the things, this has been different over this past year and I know it's different for everybody. And so I just want to encourage you today, um, that the best is still yet to come, even though we've been in this, uh, pandemic quote unquote, and that we see the tides turning. We also know that Jesus is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a miracle worker. And he sent the Holy Spirit to come and to abide and to live with us, to dwell with us, to comfort us, to keep us, to guide us. And so today we're going to get into this message. We started Thursday night dealing with who the Holy Spirit is and then talking about even the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence with speaking with other tongues and to try to demystify some things for you. Yet at the same time, I'm just I'm telling you, I'm expecting to see the power of God. And so when God has given us this mandate to go teach his people who they are and to understand the power that we walk in, the authority, the rights and the privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of those rights and privileges is receiving Holy Spirit on the inside of us to, to dwell, to live, to abide in us. And so we want to talk about this precious gift, this third person of the Godhead. Many people have different understandings about it. Some people are taught different ways. But I want to share with you from the Word of God and by the Spirit of God some things. Even as I was preparing last night and just kind of sitting and just praying, and I just begin to apply what I'm getting, I'm getting ready to teach you guys today. And there were some things that the Spirit of God began to show me, began to reveal to me, began to teach me. And He was just feeding me. And out of that, you're going to receive that overflow today. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders. The Spirit of God spoke to uh, me some time ago, the, the end of last year, about this year, and just about this ministry and about just the things that he wants to do in the earth. And one of the things was signs, wonders, and miracles, that we want to see the supernatural power of God manifest. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry to see the power of God manifest. I'm hungry to see the manifestation of the Spirit of God, not just to, to have just these grand demonstrations, but to see transformation, to see change, to see the lame walk, to see the blind, the, the blind to see, the, the deaf to hear, the mute to talk, the lame, the maimed, their body parts restored and healed. We want to see this supernatural work. Also, even in the area of business and arts and entertainment and, and government, we want to see transition of power. We want to see the power of the Holy Spirit come in and radically transform and change lives. And so even as I begin to study and as I begin to meditate and as I begin to pray, there was something supernatural that came upon my life and came upon me physically, mentally, and also ignited something in me spiritually that we have to refuse for me to refuse mediocrity. We will not allow small thinking to take place in our life, in our ministry, in this culture. And that God told us to create a culture of limitless faith. And so I want you to now get yourself together. I want you to tag somebody right now. I want you to share this with somebody right now. Listen, if you don't see some of my spirit of fire folk, if you don't see some of the people, I, I think I might tweet, uh, my, um, text some people now, get up, get out the bed, get on the computer, get on the television, t tune in to YouTube, Facebook, whatever streaming platform that we're on right now, get up and hear this message. Let them know now. If you don't see them logged in on one of the platforms, let them know. Pastor said, get up, get on there right now, right now, right now. Because it's important to hear this word. Don't hide behind the cameras. Don't, don't become stagnant. And so this is one of the things that the Spirit of God has been saying to me, that some people have become stagnant 
even in this season. They become comfortable in, do in doing nothing. He says, now it's time to pick up the pace. It's time to minister to the lives of people and to see transformation and change like never before. And so we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit and we're going to talk about his wondrous works and gifts and things that he wants to do. And the day, you know, Pentecost Sunday is coming up soon, um, a few Sundays from now. And so we're teaching and dealing with the Holy Spirit and just getting ready for that time and that culmination from Passover to Pentecost. From the time we celebrated the death, burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But also, who is this Holy Spirit? Who is this third person of the Godhead? Who is this one that's here with us in the earth today to empower us, to strengthen us, to equip us as the body of Christ, the church, to do the work of the kingdom of God? And so now we listen, we're excited about this thing and I'm ready for a supernatural explosion. Listen, I don't know if you can tell already, but this thing is welling up in me, is strengthening me. And listen, I'm telling you, God is going to strengthen you today. Some of you have been weary. You've been weary and well doing. But God says you will reap if you don't give up, cave in or quit. Listen, you've been fighting this long. You might as well go ahead and stand your ground and stand your ground and tell the tell Satan. Listen, I rebuke you to rebuke means to stop no more. Stop no more. I will not allow you to keep attacking my body, to keep attacking my mind. And I shut down every enemy attack and assault against me now in the name of Jesus. This is your due season. This is your reaping season. So I need you to receive that right now. See, listen, some people see this is why it's important to log in early to be on time for service, because you might miss out on something that God is saying and speaking to you. I know we got the benefit of replay, but this is a live stream. And there's something about it that there is no distance in the spirit. See, you can pull on me. You can pull on the spirit of God in me. You can pull on the anointing, the power of God upon my life to begin to minister to the needs that you have right now. Holy Spirit, he's here now. He's here and he's dwelling on the inside of you as well. And he wants to manifest himself in a great way, in a great way. I mean, in a great way. And so God is expanding our territory. He's stretching us. And so, I'm, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited about it. Ooh, let me set, let me settle down a little bit here. I want us to begin to pray. And so, you know, excuse me, all of my first time visitors here, any first timers that's here um, to hear this message and to log on to this worship experience, this stream, this broadcast. We thank God for you showing up today. We want to recognize who you are. And one of the things that we're doing, we're enhancing our broadcast. We're enhancing some things. We're working on our website and some other things we got in store. So we're excited about it. But we listen, we're expecting tremendous, great and mighty things to begin to take place. And so I want us to do this. If you're a first timer, log on, tell us, shoot us a message. Somebody invite somebody to come to church, invite somebody to log on to the broadcast. Listen, tell them, come on, tune in. It, it doesn't take much to share it with someone, share it to your streaming platform, to your social media platforms right now. Listen, let people know that we're on. God is doing something tremendous. He's doing something tremendous. And I know there are many voices you can be hearing right now. But God told me this one time. Um, he told me to go into our, the local jail system here. And he says, I want you to go in there and minister to the men. And I told him, I was like, God, everybody fishing in the same pond. We got plenty of churches that's going in there. He's like, why do, like, I'm like, why do I have to go in there? He says, everybody doesn't have your voice. And I said, thank you, Lord. And we sent people in there. We went in there. And we saw God do something among the lives of those men in that system. We saw many people get saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so God is saying this, I want you to put your head into the ring. I want you to put your voice out there to begin to teach and to begin to share what I've taught you over the years. And so that's what I'm doing. And that's what we're doing here as a ministry. And so we thank God for you. Listen, let's go ahead and we're going to jump into this thing. We're going to go ahead and begin to pray and Ask God that man just visit us today in such a powerful way. Now, Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity for me to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation, knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to minister to the needs of each and every individual. I pray and I ask that you anoint their ears to hear 
Help them to open up their hearts to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We thank you for it this day. We thank you. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, you already have shown me some things to come and shown me things to teach and to share. But I ask that you specifically anoint this word today, a strong, tangible anointing, the presence, the power manifesting in our midst right now. Thank you, Father. Hey, yeah, even the hardest of hearts are melting and softening even now. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance from the inside out. We give you glory and we give you praise in advance. Yeah, we give you glory. We give you praise in advance right now. Come on now. Yeah, begin to worship him. Yeah, we worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. For you are a great God. You are a mighty God. I speak peace over your people. I speak peace right now. Some of you have been disturbed in your minds. I speak peace to you now. I speak peace. I speak peace. And it'll be like because that weight of that oppressive spirit has been on you so long that as it leaves, you'll feel some of you will feel a weakness in your body. It's because that thing has left and it has been stressing your body out so much that, yeah, the spirit of God is healing you right now of any abnormalities, any symptoms of stress and anxiety right now. I come against anxiety in the name of Jesus. I command your minds to be settled and rooted in the word of God. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And Father, we give you glory for it. We give you praise and we give you honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your name. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory, 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 glory. <clears throat> glory to God. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you that minds are healed. Abnormality is healed right now. Wherever you are right now, I want you to receive. Receive your healing. Receive forgiveness. The tension, the strife. It's like it's been affecting your physical body. Satan has really been coming against families and marriages even in this season. He's been attacking relationships and we come against that now in the name of Jesus. We come against strife, division of any kind. You know what's, what will attack that, what will destroy that is to function in love. And we make a decision to walk in the love of God. We make a decision to treat people right. We make a decision to forgive even before an apology is given. We let it go. We will not hold things against one another. We will not hold things against our spouses. We will not hold things against our children, our loved ones, co-workers, whoever it is. Let it go now. Let it go. That's what's been holding up some of your healing. It's because of the bitterness and unforgiveness that's there that you have not released people who have done you wrong. God is saying, let them go now in Jesus' name. And I rebuke that oppressed. It's, it's, ah, I got to I got to share this. I know everybody may not fully understand this, depending on your backgrounds and your teaching. But I sense there. I sense there's a spiritual force. It's like a, it's, it's a small demon. It's a, and everything ain't demonic. But I, this is what I'm seeing. It's a small little thing that's disrupting, that's whispering, that's nagging, that's been assigned to destroy the assignment of God on your life. Satan hates for you to come into who you are. And he's coming against people. That's why he's coming against that husband and wife. That's why he's coming against that child in their mind. That's why he's coming against you. He's trying to hit you in areas that are sensitive to you, that are dear to you. And that's why he's trying to bring disruption. If he can bring disruption, and another word is distraction. He's trying to destroy the destiny and the purpose that you have because he knows he knows if he can disrupt you, that hits the heart of God because he loves you so much. He loves you unconditionally. He has a purpose and a plan for you. So don't you dare let the enemy come in and stop what God has started. You need to go ahead and let it go. You need to love one another. 
You need to hug one another. You need to kiss on one another. You need to show affection to one another. And we declare in the name of Jesus. See, this is a mind renewal. God is doing some things. Holy Spirit is coming in and disrupting some things because it's been blocking up some manifestations. And it's time to get rid of some junk. And God is flushing out people's systems. What I mean systems, their minds, thought processes, ideas about things. He wants the spirit of truth. That's what the Bible calls him, the spirit of truth. He wants to come and to dwell and to live and to abide. Who? Not just in your heart, but in your home. Let's set an atmosphere of the supernatural to take place. Yeah. See, I'm fed up with the enemy trying to disrupt things and trying to shut down stuff. And I command wholeness in the name of Jesus over every member, partner, and supporter of this work. In Jesus' name, I take authority over every wicked spirit. No, -uh. you stop. You stop now in your maneuvers against the people of God. Yeah, there are other people logging in there, other people logging in. Yeah, you sense the power and the presence of God. I'm speaking over you too and over your household. I command the enemy to cease and to stop, and I command healing to take place. I command wholeness to take place in your life, in your body, in your mind. It's time to let go of your mistakes of the past. Yes, you made the mistake. Yes, you didn't obey God. But God is saying you can pick up from where you are right now. He says, all you have is all I need. Yeah, yeah, whatever you have right now is all I need. If I multiplied the fish and the loaves, I can multiply what's in your hands. I can multiply what you have left. I can, yeah, pick up the pieces. That's what I'm hearing, pick up the pieces. Pick up the pieces. See, yeah, they were about to throw away the fragments of what was left over after the miracle that Jesus performed with the fish and the loaves. But Jesus says, wait a minute, pick up those fragments. That's for the boy who sowed the seed. And God is saying, the fragments that are left, I'm going to bring it together right now for you. And I'm going to cause things to accelerate and increase in your life in the name of Jesus. And he says, I want you to receive it now. Come on, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, the fragmented parts of your life. God is mending it right now. Yeah, you couldn't go into a new relationship because you were so damaged from the last one. And God is saying, I'm going to supernaturally heal you. I'm going to do for you in moments what a lifetime of counseling couldn't do. God is saying, I'm coming in now because time is short and time is of the essence. But you need to receive it right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, the power of God is flowing. He's present. He's manifesting right now. Holy Spirit is manifesting right now. Holy Spirit is manifesting right now. I got to do what God has called me to do. This is my coat. This is my coat of anointing. This is what God graced me to do. Glory to God. He said to see the things that are binding people up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free right now. Yeah, tell people they want to get free. Jump on this broadcast right now. You better text somebody because the power of God is present. I'm coming, I'm coming unapologetic and unashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. God is saying, I want to deliver, set free, make whole. Whatever is wrong is going to be made right. Whatever is rough is going to be made smooth. Whatever is crooked is going to be made straight now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we coming with all guns blazing, baby. Yeah, he says, but I'm going to do you with power from on high. He says, yeah, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. And the power of the Holy Spirit is coming into your home right now, coming into your car right now, coming in on your job right now. And you need, yeah, some of you are crying and some of you are experiencing God's power working in you. And you are sensing, some of you are sensing that thing that has been abiding in you and on you, and it's trying to fight. It's trying to fight to stay. But I command the force of the anointing of God, the force of faith, to shatter that thing off of you now in the name of Jesus. You got to loose them and let them go. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Great favor I declare over you and over your life. Great favor, 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 great favor in Jesus name. Great favor, I declare 
It's stuff that you couldn't do in and of yourself. Holy Spirit is coming and manifesting. He's going to help you with the negotiations. He's going to help you with the approvals. The underwriters got to approve you now. Everybody got to approve you now. Yeah, whatever wicked devices that are behind the scenes, God is going to expose them so that you won't make bad deals any longer. He's going to reveal things to you. This is part of what Holy Spirit will do for you. He'll show you things to come. He'll reveal things unto you. He'll help manifest. He will heighten your intellect and your understanding. He's going to heighten your awareness of things. The eyes of your understanding are about to be enlightened and you're about to see stuff you haven't seen before. You're about to experience things in the spirit you haven't experienced before. I'm just going for this thing now and I'm just feeling the anointing and the power of God flowing and the Holy Spirit is manifesting and he says, I want my people to experience the fullness of the glory, the fullness of who I am, the fullness, full exposure to the power and the grace of God manifesting. He said, yeah, do cumbre sete cano. Glory to God. I see that thing. Glory, glory, glory. I mean power, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Some of you need to laugh at the devil. You haven't laughed in a long time. True joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Sometimes you got to laugh by faith. Sometimes you got to laugh in advance. You got to praise God in advance. Stop waiting for things to turn around before you act like it's already done. You, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Lord is the strength of your life. The peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God will rule in your heart. And right now, refuse to worry about anything. Yeah, he got, Jesus said it like this. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't you let your heart be troubled. In Jesus' name, trouble your trouble. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Glory to God. See, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. The Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit will come and abide in us and live in us and dwell in us. And Jesus said it like this in John 14 and 15 and through 17. He says, listen, like this. He says, if you love me, he says, keep my commandments. And the commandment that he told us to keep was the commandment of love. Love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We need to develop this love. He says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He says, I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. He goes down in verse 26. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. He'll teach you how to be a husband. He'll teach you how to be a wife. He'll teach you how to be a father or a mother. He'll teach you how to run that business. He'll teach you how to run that ministry. Listen, you're going to men to get things that only the Holy Spirit can teach you and train you in. Yes, it's good that you've gone to others. Yes, you, it's good you read books. But there's something about getting in the presence of God and hearing directly from God himself by the person of the Holy Spirit. And he will lead God and direct you. There are things he's been speaking to you and you need to begin to activate those things in Jesus name. He's going to show you stuff to come. Yeah, he's going to strengthen you. The Holy Spirit is a strengthener. Yeah, he strengthens us. He strengthens us. He strengthens us. Yeah, if you're feeling weak, you got the power source on the inside of you. You have the power source. Depression is no match for the Holy Spirit. You better hear me. You better hear me. This is why he's given us this ability, this supernatural ability to speak with other tongues, to draw out the power, to draw out the wisdom, to strengthen your spirit man, to charge your spirit man up, to charge it like a battery where you become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Glory to God. And the Bible says, I'll quicken your mortal bodies. I'll make your body alive again. The power coming upon physical body, the physical flesh will begin to accelerate healing. And I'm going to speak it again. God is weaning you completely off every medication you've been on. 
in Jesus name. I command cataracts to dissipate and disappear now in Jesus name. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Nerve endings, nerve damage. I command it to be restored now in Jesus name. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Move that knee like you couldn't move it before by faith. Do what you couldn't do before. Do something by faith. Glory to God. The power of God is present to heal. I'm telling you, I'm sensing this thing on me. It's permeating out of me. I can sense it going out. You better come on and latch on to this thing. Yeah, yeah. Blood diseases are healed in the name of Jesus. Anemic, people who are anemic. I call you whole. Your blood thickens and loosens properly. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, bro, any blood clotting that is taking place that needs to be removed, I command it to be removed now. Yeah, your heart beats with the rhythm of life. Yeah, any clogged arteries, I command the plaque to dissolve and to dissipate now and to disappear in the name of Jesus. Yeah, there was something in somebody that was about to cause in the near future. It could have caused heart issues. I command heart murmurs to be healed now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, I hear this. He's called Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will cause us to live holy. He will lead God and direct. God said in the book of Ezekiel, I'm going to take out of you a heart of stone and put in you a heart of flesh. And I'm going to write my commandments upon your heart. He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you and write my laws upon your heart and cause you to be able to walk in my statutes. See, part of the Holy Spirit's job is to help you to live. He'll tell you what to put off. He'll tell you the people you need to leave. He'll tell you situations you need to come out of. He'll warn you of things to come. He'll let you know, don't you go to that place because it's only degradation that's there. It's only stuff that's going to drag you down. He is trying to warn his people. He is trying to help you live a holy life, a life holiness in alignment with God's way of doing it. That's kingdom living, baby. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is here. Receive him. Some of you ain't prayed in the spirit. I don't know how long. You need to begin to now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Both sick on the awaken right now. Prime the pump of that well of the spirit on the inside of you. By faith, come on with me. Some of y'all begin to pray with me right now. And I know some of y'all, some people come out there and like, why y'all praying like that? People don't understand you. What if somebody come that don't understand? Right now, we, I'm going under the unction of the Holy Ghost. He's saying begin to pray. Stir up the gift of God that's in you. Stir up the gift of God that's in you. Yeah, that liquor, you need to put it down. You need to put it down. Yeah, uh-huh. That liquor, you need to put it down. You know you've been, you've been locked into that thing. And you've been doing it now to try to medicate. And you say, oh, it's okay. God don't mind. But God is saying this. You need to put that stuff down now in the name of Jesus. Because it's tearing up your witness. It's tearing up your witness. And people see it. But God says, I want you to be free. I want to remove every hindrance in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance. Every hindrance. Yeah, it's not to bring it's not to bring condemnation and guilt. Uh-uh. Conviction. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's interesting when we start dealing with the lifestyles, our lifestyles. That, that that's different because God is trying to get something to us, not hold something back from us. He wants you to enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Glory to God. Mm -mm. No, say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because what happens is sometimes the thought process is, oh, don't say nothing about that because now it's going to make people feel bad. No, it's not about making them feel bad. It's about hitting areas. And Holy Spirit is saying, I want to unmask and uncover areas that you've been praying about trying to figure out why certain things don't work out right. And he wants to reveal those things to you so that you can deal with it accordingly. He is the Holy Spirit. You're not going to miss out on life. You're going to enjoy life. You're going to have fun. Man, I'm telling you, he's the greatest thing. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to want to go out there and experience things. But I knew that, man, I'm telling you, God would have reins on me as a young man coming up. 
And while others was out partying, getting high, smoking weed, getting drunk, I'm in the presence of God. Was I the perfect guy? No, by no means. But God had his hand on me. And when the hand of God is on you, he won't allow you to do it. It's stuff that you can't get away with that other people getting away with. Why? Because God is calling you. His hand of his goodness is upon you. God's hand of goodness is upon you right now. God's hand of goodness. And he wants you to experience it. Yeah. Mm. There's a young woman who's been hurt. And it's almost like I sent somebody, and this is what I thought the thought popped up in me, and I'm going to speak it. That somebody secretly had an abortion, and it's been racking you, and it's been hurt, it's been tormenting you. God says, be free. I've forgiven you. You need to forgive yourself now. Let it go. He says, I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. He says, go ahead, go ahead, let it go. See, for you, sometimes the Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's in James 5, 16. You might need to find a close confidant, a friend, somebody that you can confide in to let that thing out. Yeah, things have been tormenting you. And Satan is saying that, you know what, God don't love you because you did this. And it's almost like it's this unbearable, unthinkable act. But God's grace is sufficient for you, baby. Yeah, I'm telling you, God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He loves you. Oh, God. I'm going to tell you this. I'm just sensing. I, I, man, I got to flow with this. Religiosity, religion. Oh, a, a pious attitude. It stinks in the nostrils of God. That's why he says a prideful spirit. He hates it. Arrogance. He hates it. Man, we got to demonstrate love towards mankind. It doesn't mean we got to agree with everything that people do or condone it, but you got to demonstrate love to people, man. How can they be transformed if they are, don't, can't experience the love of God through you and I? We got to love people right where they are. Let's love them. Let's love them. Love your neighbor. He says, love your neighbor as yourself, whether it's your actual neighbor who lives right next to you or somebody else that you just work with, or somebody you come across, listen, man, demonstrate God's love. The Holy Spirit will lead you to love people. He will correct you about you and tell you, you know what, you're not acting right. You need to come out of your own self-centeredness and begin to go across and minister to that person right now. When you begin to do that, the power of God will begin to operate on your behalf. And you'll begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Some of you have been wondering, how come I haven't seen these gifts manifest in my life, the gifts of the Spirit? That's because for some of you, you never positioned yourself to be used by God. He says, if you position yourself to be used by me, I will begin to manifest in a strong way. And I'll begin to reveal things to you. And it'll come up, stuff will come up in you to show you what's going on in people's lives. Not to condemn them, not to talk bad or belittle them, but to minister to them. And when you call it out, even scripture talks about it. It's the gifts are for those that are without, more so those within. And we so busy prophesying to each other that that person on the job, that person don't want nothing to do with God. When they come and encounter a true believer who is Holy Ghost possessed, man, and controlled and ruled by the Holy Spirit to come and say, go minister to them and talk to them about what's been going on in their life and the hurt and the bitterness and the anger and the resentment. Just speak into them. They've never had somebody to speak words of affirmation over them. So just begin to speak life to them. Begin to show who you are. Will the real Christians please stand up? God, I'm telling you, God is unveiling. God is releasing. There are people who are being released in areas like you've never seen before, but great boldness is about to come upon them. Great, great boldness, great boldness, great strength, great grace, great power. The power is present to heal. The power is present to heal. Glory to God. The power is present to heal. 
Where, 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 where John, John Michael? Come, come out here real quick. The Spirit of God just spoke to me something. Yeah, we, we gonna, I got to obey what the Spirit of God is saying. Relax, we're going we're gonna to lay hands on your shoulder. Some of y'all can't see this right here. My son just recently had an injury on his shoulder. This is the second time it took place. But we're praying right now for divine healing. Lexi, I want you to lay hands on this shoulder, right? The shoulder that it is. Now, in the name of Jesus, I want y'all to be in agreement with him. At first, I was going to bring him on the camera, but I was like, no, nah, I'll just let him stand right there. In Jesus' name, we command healing to take place. We command the shoulder to be completely repaired and restored and stronger than ever before. And it will not come back a second time in the name of Jesus. Now we speak over your life. We declare and decree that you will walk in the great favor of God and that everything, every offer that you need will come to you in abundance. In the name of Jesus, we speak the strength of God upon you. We speak confidence and boldness upon you. We speak fearlessness upon you now that you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you will see who you are in Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of y'all need to go ahead. Some of y'all right now, some of y'all right now, if there are people, there are prayer requests, type them in right now. We're going to have people come and pray. Intercessors that are listening, that are watching. As you see those requests come in, I want y'all to begin to pray for those people. We have intercessors watching. Our intercessors, I want y'all to start praying. Put prayer requests right now. If there are prayer requests, something that's going on, whatever is happening, put it in your comment section right now. If there are loved ones, there are situations that are going on. We declare favor over you now in the name of Jesus. We declare wisdom over you now in the name of Jesus. We declare it. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Obey the Spirit of God. Obey. Don't let pride keep you from receiving. Come on. Yeah, we speak over marriages. We speak over hurts and pains of yesteryear, healing and wholeness, mental instability. We command it to be healed. Yeah, even chemical imbalances. We command it to be made whole and restored. A great chemical balance even in your mind, in your physical body. In Jesus name. Yeah, we command that you come off of diabetic medications now. In Jesus name. Insulin. Yeah. Any, any medications? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 In Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We have any coming in? We have any um, prayer requests yet? All right. Bring them in. Bring them in. Uh, listen to what I'm saying. Some of you said, well, I already prayed about it. If the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you to come in and do it. We know you can pray. Sometimes people walk in pride and don't know it. Bible says if any sick among you, let them call. He says, let them pray first. But then it's like, let them call for the elders of the church. Hallelujah. A sober journey. Prayer for a sober journey. Depression. Oh yeah, we come against depression in the name of Jesus. We yeah, we do yeah, soberness. Now, I'm not fully sure what you mean by sober journey, but I'm going to pray. Not only mean physically sober or just spiritually sober, but we declare both. <laughs> now, Holy Spirit, you know all things and you do all things well. Cuz one of the benefits of praying in the spirit is this, and praying in tongues is that the Holy Spirit will pray for things that we don't know how to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself will pray for us through us according to the perfect will of God. So we lift up those individuals. Come on, Holy Spirit, we pray out mysteries, divine secrets. We declare and decree right now, we come against depression. We declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, this is what you need to do. When those depressing thoughts come against you, you take God's word. Now, this is what you do. You speak life. You declare and decree that I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. The peace of God is upon me. And I reject that thought in Jesus name. I declare that I'm happy and full of joy. I declare it in Jesus name. I declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
and that the Lord is the strength of my life. Yeah. Say, I declare that the peace of God, the wholeness of God, the shalom of God, that means peace, rules in my heart. And say, I refuse to worry about anything in Jesus name. Yeah, I thank you for soberness of thought. Yeah. You even said in your word, Father, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Thank you for that individual that is alert and attentive, that they will see the distractions as well. They will see the things ahead of time that lead them to certain acts. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Adjustment in schedules, adjustment in habits. For some of you, it's an adjustment of habits. New habits, forming new habits, seeking God early. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I see another one here. Hard to fully forgive all who neglect it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for people, yeah. I see, I see, I see. That person wants to forgive. That people that have neglected them. You don't want to cut them off. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Watch this. You got to allow the love of God to demonstrate, to manifest through you. This means making a decision. Love says this. Love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless. It's not bitter. It's not jealous. It's not envious or full of pride. It doesn't display itself heartily. It's not rude, unmannerly. It's not arrogant. Love will intentionally, God's love that abides in us, that's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, according to Romans 5 and 5. That is one of the fruits of the spirit. I call it the fruit of the spirit that all other fruits flow out of. You make a decision to grow in love. So I decide that's what forgiveness is. You forgive an individual and you let it go before they do anything to show that their attitude has changed and their ways have changed to say. Now I choose to cho to treat you right, even though you treated me wrong. And now, God, I ask you to empower me and to strengthen me in this thing. Yeah, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of love to help me to love what's unlovely. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, uh-huh. Praying for someone's um, granddaughter who has a blood disease and in the hospital, they're not eating. We come against blood disease. Yeah, we start talking against that. Yeah, we speak against blood disease now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We come against every blood disease. Yeah, we command that child's appetite to come back again now in Jesus' name. Yeah, to eat properly, that the proper nutrition, yeah, flow, that their body receives the proper nutrition now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real bullshit, they can't. Intercessors is out there. Pray, 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 pray. We're praying for one another. See, this is community. This is community. This is what church is for. This is what the body of Christ is for. This is why we're a fellowship of believers coming one to, to one another. I pray over every member. I pray over a partner, every partner and supporter. I pray for peace right now. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Who? Glory. 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 Let it go. Let it go. That bitterness that's been there, that resentment, that resentment. It, it's almost like you can tell it's like a force that's trying to hold you captive. It's like, don't forgive them, remember. And Satan tries to keep reminding you of what they've done to you. Uh-uh. Shut that thought down. I cast that image down in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I cast that image down. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, Father, I love and I, yeah. Say this. Say, I choose to forgive. I choose to love. And you can call their name out. I've done that about people in my private time. Father, I forgive so-and-so, and I choose not to hold any art against them. Yeah, I choose to not hold anything against them because that hinders you and what you're believing for. That hinders your faith because faith worketh by love. And you're believing for too much to allow this stuff to come in you and to hold you back. It's too much you got to go into. Man, I, whew. Man, I wish I was there to just love on y'all. I just want to hug on and lay hands on folks. It's like, man, my goodness. Glory to God. Put your hand over your heart now. And, yeah, put your hand over your heart and declare and decree, I forgive. I sense that. This is not just one person. There's many people. 
that's dealing with unforgiveness. That's dealing with unforgiveness. Let it go. Let it go. No, I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. <laughs> for some of you, the person that you hard is hard for you to forgive. They holding the same art against you, thinking that you did something to them, and you feel like they did something to you. And God wants to restore. He wants to restore. Sometimes just good, honest communication will handle that. And to listen intently with the intent to understand the other person's hurt. Love them. Love them. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, heal every heart, Lord. Heal every heart. Heal every heart. Heal every heart. I'm going to have a transparent moment here. Many years ago, this was way before I, this was before I got married, um, I was in a moment of fasting and prayer with the church we were a part of. I was a part of at that time. And I had been having some heart pain. It was some pain in my chest. Right there in my heart area. And I was like, man, this is, I'm like early 20s. I'm like, this, this, this ain't right. I'm too young to have any heart issues or whatever. And so, you know, I pray about it, come against it in Jesus' name. One day I'm laying on my bed and I'm praying, just praying, spending time with God, because God had me on a prayer regimen. I couldn't watch TV at that time. I think that was the time, yeah, I couldn't watch television. Um, he had me very regimented. And out of the blue, I said, Lord, I forgive my father, because I didn't realize how much I was holding against him, because I felt like he wasn't doing everything he should have been doing as a father for me. I didn't realize I was holding it. The very minute I said, Lord, I forgive him, I lie to you not. I literally felt a force come out of my chest. I felt the pain come physically come out of my chest. It was a spiritual matter. And it left instantly. Right after that, I ended up ministering to my father for the very first time. I ministered to him the love of Christ. I ministered to him salvation. At that moment, he didn't really want to hear it at that time. But later on, we found out. I even knew at my wedding, uh, I think one of my brothers saw that he raised his hand to receive Christ at our wedding, my wife and I's wedding. Then we found he had passed suddenly, right before my girls were born. And I believe my mom found a letter uh, from 700 Club where he called in to get saved. We, nobody knew it. That he called in to get born again. I was like, thank you, Lord. And I knew even as he was on that, that hospital bed, he had an aneurysm. And he was on the hospital bed. And we praying for God to heal him and for everything. And all of a sudden, I just felt this peace. It's like, and I was an elder at the church that was there. And it was like, it's like it's between him and God. I said, yeah. I said, I can't explain. It's just, I just sent such a peace. And the doctors had asked us, told us to make a decision whether we were going to pull the plug or not. He went on home to be with the Lord. And once we found that out, I was like, God, I'm good. He's at, he's with you. Man, this just, but it's something about that forgiveness that opens the door to the manifestation of the power of God. Man, I'm saying, whoo, glory to God. Whoo, glory. This thing is strong, folks. You need to forgive now. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, we pray, yes, yeah, seizures and epilepsy. We command seizures to cease now in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke the spirit of fear behind it now as well. The fear of that epileptic episode coming on you. We come against that now. You reject it. You command it to leave because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I declare that you are healed. God has already declared it in his word. Now you need to declare it, declare, declare, declare. We declare healing over your body. Say by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Glory to God. The supernatural power of God is working in my body. Now it's working in my mind. It's working in every area in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Whoo. Yes, yeah, supernatural working. The power of the Spirit of God is working in you. It's working through you, healing, wholeness, 
Oh, uh, yeah. I told God, God, I understand about gradual healings, but I'm ready to see instantaneous ones. Because I believe, uh, -uh I believe this thing. Yeah. A member's mother. Yeah. Health. We praying for mom's health right now. Wholeness in every area, spirit, soul, and body, every area, healing, healing, whatever is wrong is made right. We speak to her body now. We command every level to be normalized, her blood pressure to be normalized, her heart to beat with the rhythm of life, producing pure blood that flows throughout her body, permeating life and health right now in Jesus name. Her mind is sharp, alert and attentive. Bring wisdom upon every doctor, every nurse, every attending, anybody that's attending to your health. We declare the wisdom of God upon them for them to even supernaturally know how to treat. Yeah, there's some things. Yeah, you have to study and research yourself, folks. But we're also praying for favor for those that are around you to help you diagnose things properly and to help with the treatments and the options to assist and to help. In Jesus name. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah, this is this, good here. This is good here. Yeah, this is good here. Uh-huh. Fully restored. Fully restored. Fully healed. Fully healed. Let it go. 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 The person who was doing, uh, who did with the heart, with the forgiveness, was that public? Was that private that was shared? It was shared publicly? Okay. I want to make sure because I didn't want to say anyone's name, but I feel this thing so strong <laughs> in that area. Jewel, God is saying, God is working in you, girl. He is working in you because there is so much grace and favor. You are about to come into an explosion of favor, an explosion of the goodness of God. Satan has tried to crush your spirit. I, man, I hear that. Woo. He has tried to crush your spirit. God is saying, you are so beautiful in his eyes. You, the glory of God that's about to shine forth through your life and ministry. I mean, the glory is going to fall, girl, when you open up your mouth to sing and you minister. But God is working such a work in you. Who glory to God. It's like the little girl in you. He's healing now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. He's healing you. Yeah, ooh, from the womb to now, everything you've been through from a child, every bad thing that's happened to you in Jesus name, uh-huh, everything, everything, he's healing it. He's uprooting that thing right now in the name of Jesus, uh-huh, he's uprooting that thing. I, yeah, I sense that thing. He is uprooting it right now in Jesus name, healing, 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 every bad touch, he's healing. Yeah, every bad word, he's healing. Every abusive thing, he's healing in Jesus' name. Yeah, do brush et do cumbra. Yeah, glory. Man, the power is present to heal. And it ain't just you, it's others that God is touching at the same time. Whoo, bad touches. Mm -hmm. Restoring that open doors to perverted thought patterns and processes and perverted spirits. It is destroyed. Remove now. God ain't playing. He is there is great deliverance and freedom, and you are free from this day forward. From this day forward. From this day forward, I declare and decree. Yeah, I declare and decree. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Just because it comes to your mind does not mean that's who you are. Hey. Just because it comes to your mind does not mean that's who you are. Just because that thought, that feeling tries to rise up does not mean you have to succumb to it. That is a lying symptom from the pit of hell. Yes, it is. From Satan himself trying to get you off into perversion that God never designed for you to be a part of. You were not born that way. I'm sorry. I got to deal with this now. Uh -uh, I ain't playing with this thing. I ain't playing with this spirit. I ain't playing with it. I'm calling it out now in Jesus name. Oh, I can, I can talk on this. See, I can talk on this. Who I, who I said, man, I sense righteous indignation. Ooh, there's such a spirit of perversion that has been released in the earth. The God is saying, I'm about to show up in such a way 
you, it will be undeniable the power of God that you're about to see. Families are being healed and about to be. Ooh, because of secret desires that are leaving people. Now, in Jesus' name. Uh-uh. And people battling, well, I wonder if this is. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. See, your identity is in Christ. He told you, he's giving you the design of who you are. Glory to God. Yeah. We speak over an individual about their liver as well, for their liver to be healed. Yeah, we speak over it. In Jesus' name. Is it okay to call out some of the names? Okay. To call out John's liver right now, we command John's liver to be healed now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah, John's liver to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Brand new. Brand new. We call it brand new. Yeah, brand new. And that your pancreas secretes the proper amount of insulin that promotes life and health as well. Glory to God. Your heart is strong and beats well. Yeah, robosh ededekon. I rebuke stress. I rebuke stress. I rebuke stress that has caused some things to damage in some people's bodies. Yeah, we speak over Raheem's kidney now in the name of Jesus. We command it to be restored. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new in Jesus' name. Yeah. We command it to be healed. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all, even if I haven't called you out or called out your name, pray, pray, pray. Pray with us. Pray for individuals. It ain't all about you. Sometimes, listen, if you pray for others that are helping your situation, let's minister to people. You know God has taken us in a different direction this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I knew the Holy Spirit was going to show up one way, fashion, or form. I already knew. I sensed it. I didn't know what was going to hit today. But I knew something was going to hit. Glory to God. 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 You're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're in the image of God. You're in the image of God. You're part of the body of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are in him and he's in you. Glory to God. You are one with Christ. Yeah, that's your identity. You're an ambassador for Christ. You're a king and a priest. You've been made in his glory. You've been made for his glory as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak life. There is such power in you folks. There is such power in us as the body of Christ that this power will change and rearrange things around us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 If some of these people are watching, receive it now. Receive it for them. I know some of you standing in proxy. Some of you saying, putting their names out there to pray for them. Yeah, whatever God leads you to do on their behalf. Hey, whether it's you lay your hands on them, ask them, hey, whatever it is, we're praying with you. We're in agreement with you. We're in agreement with all of you. Yeah, man, that's seizure. Uh, don't you be afraid of coming out of your sleep or having a seizure in your sleep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't go to sleep afraid. There's a scripture, I believe it's in Proverbs 324. But you should not be afraid when you go to sleep. When you like, let me, I'm on to read it to you. I want to read it to you real quick. Normally I can quote that thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It says, when thou liest down, Proverbs 3.24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. It says, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. The Lord is your confidence. Yea, you will not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. I come against that as well. You will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You will live long and you will live strong. Yeah, the weight is coming off. The organs are being restored. Your body is coming into perfect alignment now. God is dealing, really dealing with healing and health. Perfect alignment now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Skin conditions are being healed now from the inside out. From the inside out. 
from the inside out. Remember the woman, yeah, with the issue of blood was healed and made whole. For she said within herself continuously, if I may but touch, she declared her faith and she acted out on her faith. The woman who was bound for 18 years. Jesus says, woman, thou art loose. I don't care how long it's been. This is your receiving day. This is, this is your receiving day. Receive the word of the Lord. Receive the gift of, of grace. Receive the gift of Christ. Receive, yeah, this is your promise. This is part of your promise, man. Healing and wholeness, deliverance and freedom. Hallelujah. We have been made free and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So we're going to rejoice now. We're going to thank God now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Woo! Ah, oh, peace on earth, goodwill towards all men. That ain't just for Christmas. That's a declaration. Peace on earth. Goodwill towards all men. Peace. Peace. Peace I speak over you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm? We got one more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Healing from surgery. For Titch, okay? We command healing. We command wholeness. Yeah, we command it. Yeah, healing, 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 healing. Yeah. Quick recovery. One of the things God is dealing with me about is it don't take a lot of words. It just take the right words spoken in faith. Speak life. It's done. Jesus didn't do a whole bunch of talking. He would speak. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came from the dead. There's so much power in the word of God. Watch this. Words are containers. The Bible says it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, but what comes out of his mouth. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you are, is abundance in you, you will say it out of your mouth. And when it comes out, whatever you speak and believe, you'll have it. Whether it's good or whether it's bad. So you need to have God's word abiding in you. And you need to allow your words to even be directed by the Holy Spirit. To show you things to declare and decree. To show you things to come. To show you how to speak life. Yeah. No death. No coronavirus. It dies instantly. Dies instantly. When it comes in our vicinity, it dies instantly. The anointing permeates throughout our bodies, promoting life and health. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria and infirmity that tries to touch or infiltrate our bodies in any way, shape, fashion or form dies instantly in Jesus name. Our immune systems are strong and ward off sickness and disease. Hallelujah. Woo. Man. Glory to God. If you're here today, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Go ahead, get born again, y'all. Get born again, get born again, get born again. Come on the winning side. We the winners here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. For those that have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. <clears throat> Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you might be born again, but you've been lacking power in your life. God wants you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. All you got to do is ask for him to come and to dwell in you, and he'll come to dwell in you. The Bible declares whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe, believe, believe that you receive them. Believe you receive them when you pray and you shall have them. That includes Holy Spirit, I'm telling you. If you ask him to come dwell in you, he'll come. Say this, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now 
on the inside of me. You now promise me the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, say, I receive this endowment of power. I receive the Holy Spirit to live in me, to abide in me, to dwell in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're going to begin to pray. Open up your mouth, begin to speak. Add voice. He's going to give you an utterance to speak in a heavenly language. It may not sound just like mine, but right now, right now, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But thus spake he of the Spirit. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Lift up your hands. Receive. Receive the Holy Spirit now to dwell in you, to abide in you, to live in you. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Shokumbre basio tokumbre. Lana mashando kure basiterebe. Now, now watch this. Every day, every day, I want you to pray like that. Every day, every day, just say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. And that the Bible declares that you will help me and give me utterance to pray like this, to pray it with other tongues. And so when you do, you say, okay, now help me. And you have to begin to speak. You have to talk. He's going to give you the others. He's going to assist you. So you can just start off. Just yield your tongue to him. Open up your mouth. Begin to speak. He'll show you the things to speak. You believe it. Believe it. Then your heavenly language. For some people, it comes fluently. Some, they grow in that fluency. More and more that they speak like this, the stronger it becomes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, we're going to honor God. Now, before we do communion, if there's anybody that does not have a church home and you want to connect with this ministry, we want to receive you, to love on you, to, pro to watch over you, to minister um, to you, and to, to pray for you and for your families, to cover you guys. We love you so much and we appreciate you so much. If that's you, we want you to let us know. Reach out to us, send us a message. DM us and say, hey, I want to connect with Spirit of Fire. I need a church home. Whether you listen, whether you're locally or globally, we're building our global network of believers as well as our local. God told me build locally, but think globally. And he wants us to have this strong digital platform where we train and develop believers on the Lord Jesus Christ to go into the earth. Oh, man, as kingdom citizens manifesting who they are in Christ. So we thank God for you here. Hallelujah. Also, we're going to take this time. Um, well, before we do our offering, we're going to go ahead and take of communion. This is first Sunday. Every first Sunday, we partake of communion. Uh, for those that maybe didn't remember, if you want to quickly run and grab something, um, a piece of bread, a cracker, some juice or whatever, you can do that. If you don't have it, it's okay. If you just need to go ahead later after we finish and do it with your family, get your family involved, man. Get your children involved. Show them the importance of this. Some of you watching, but your children just sitting around sleeping or something. No, they need to be listening as well. They need to be listening as well. Get them involved in the Word of God. Get them involved in, in things of the Spirit, the ministry of the Word of God. Now, we sanctify these elements in Jesus name for the purpose of communion to recognize the death, burial and resurrection of Christ, his body that was broken for us, his blood that was shed for us. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or taking away of sins. Jesus' body was broken for us. His body was uh, beat with the cat of nine tails and he had 39 stripes upon his body, which was the maximum penalty. And even now, doctors have researched and said that there are 39 categories of diseases that all diseases come from. That's something, man. God knew ahead of time. He took care of everything before it ever came into being, before it was ever discovered. The remedy is already there. Jesus is our healer. His healing power flows through us. Now, he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. Let's eat. Mm hmm. As you're eating, you're receiving your healing. Receive your healing by faith. Same man also, he took the cup. When he is up saying this cup is a New Testament in my blood. 
as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to honor God in our giving. There's some information coming up on your screen as to how you can do that. Listen, as you freely receive, freely give. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. Obey the spirit of God. We thank you for your financial support that continues to allow us to do these things, these broadcasts, and we are believing for our new facilities and things of that nature to do, our office spaces, warehouse spaces, things of that, to get the vision out there. Um, we're gonna be doing a vision Sunday soon where I'm going to lay out exactly what's on my heart, you know, just to make sure everybody's on point. We'll have our presentation together for it. And so um, I was just sitting, even as I was writing last night, Holy Spirit was just sharing some things with me. And as I was just typing and writing and putting some things together, um, the vision is yet for an appointed time. It shall speak. He said, though it tarry, wait on it. Though it tarry, wait on it. He says, wait on it. There's much to do for the kingdom of God. And we're going to get this thing done as a family. Hallelujah. So that information is up there. However you desire to give, do it. Do it quickly. Do it with joy. We call it opportunity for prosperity time. We thank God for debt cancellations, debt removals. We're believing with you for supernatural increase. Contracts, new contracts, new jobs, new negotiations, new things, new homes, new vehicles you're believing for. Listen, your seed does not just deal with the financial aspects, but it deals with other aspects as well in your life. Your seed will meet every need, glory to God. The Bible even declares that money is a defense and it answereth all in the book of Ecclesiastes. And so we understand that, I'm telling you, money makes a lousy master, but an excellent servant. And so we serve God with money and we honor him. We are blessed to be a blessing until all families of the earth have been blessed. Praise God. Well, y'all, I enjoyed this time today. I don't know about y'all, but man, I'm expecting even greater to take place. Please send us testimonies as things are manifesting. We, we want to hear what God is doing in your life. We love you guys and appreciate you so much. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just say in our spirit of our family, my family to your family, we love you guys. We appreciate you so much. And may the grace and peace of God rest heavy upon you the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May all things work together for your good. Father, we give you the glory and the praise for it, for an, a supernatural explosion of grace manifested, grace personified. Glory to God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. We love you guys. Don't forget Spirit of Fire at Home this Thursday, 7 p.m. sharp. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. See you next time. Peace.